Good morning. Welcome to combined services here at McDougal United Church and Ogden United Church here on this beautiful Sunday morning. You ever have one of those days where it just feels like things keep piling on and piling on and piling on at the start of the day? We need the light of Christ before I start these announcements, so I'm going to totally mess with the order of things, and I'm trusting there will be grace in that, because I have a lot of news to unpack for you folks this morning, whether you are from McDougal or from Ogden. None of us are getting out of here unscathed today. We are reminded as we light the light of Christ that Christ is with us in the good times and in the bad, that this light drives out the darkness and offers us the warmth and comfort of knowing that God is with us and that we can trust in that promise in all things. Thanks be to God. Amen. Some of you will know, many of you may not know, folks at McDougal, that uh, Bill Love died yesterday. Um, and so we... We certainly lift up Bill's family and friends. And I know that a great many of you even here today are grieving the loss of a man who was so uh, integral to so much of what happened here at McDougal over the years, a member of this community, uh, a man of great humor and great cheer and strong integrity in all things. And I know that this is not easy news for anyone to hear and so know that uh, my heart goes out to each and every one of you, and that details will, will emerge uh, over time as, uh, as the service and remembrance and opportunities to be a part of that are, are made known. Unfortunately, at the start of today, that was the only bad news I was supposed to have to deliver. That's not how the day has gone. Very few, if any of you will know, that late last night, uh, Marilyn Cheney had a stroke. and is in the hospital right now, still being assessed. Larry Cheney called me this morning on my way to church to let me know uh, that Marilyn would not be reading the scripture today, obviously, um, and to ask for some very uh, clear boundaries here. So I want, I, I understand the shock, and I understand all of the good intent that everyone is going to have right now, but please, please listen to me carefully. Larry has requested that at this time, nobody go visit, okay? We all want to, we all want to be that support. Larry is asking for time for them to figure out exactly what Marilyn's status is. We can respect that, and we can do that to be a support, all right? Larry has also requested that anyone who would like to visit Marilyn in due course not to do so without checking with him first. We can do that in order to be supportive. Larry has also requested, knowing how wonderful you guys are, that there are going to be a whole bunch of people who are either going to wait until the end of service or who are going to leave right about the sermon and go out and try to call Larry. Please don't, because he has been up all night, and as of 9 o'clock this morning, he was just going to bed. And so he is asking that people refrain from calling until later on this afternoon to give him time to rest after a very long, hard night. I believe we can do this for Larry and Marilyn, and to reflect the care and concern that we have for them at this time, but please, hold Larry and Marilyn and their family and their friends and everybody in, their, in your prayers and in your hearts. It is not an easy time. I wish that was where the bad news stopped. But three minutes ago, people of Ogden United Church, I got a phone call that Betty McKinstry died yesterday. Betty Betty McKinstry is one of those people that I consider to be the pillars of Ogden United Church. Right? Even, even when she moved into care, her presence was still felt in the halls and in the community nonstop of Ogden United. And so again, my heart goes out to all of you at Ogden United Church as we receive this news. 
and details will be communicated as they unfold. So normally we would do our announcements and sing and you know, sing our boisterous opening hymn and maybe, maybe we'll get to that, but perhaps, perhaps right now we can just forget about the order of service and just spend some time in prayer. Would that be okay with everybody? Let's do that. God, this is not how we envisioned this day starting. Perhaps the great struggle of being in relationship with one another is the, the grief and the heartache and the turmoil that we experience in those times of loss in those times of great struggle, in those times when something absolutely shocking happens to those we love. And so we sit here this morning, oh God, in this space, in this community. Two communities that have been joined together for the past couple of years that are both grieving this morning, oh God. The words escape us. We know simply the shock and the hurt. And we wonder how it is that we best respond to reflect our love for these people that have been so central to the lives of our communities, these people that we have called friends, these people that have been through thick and thin with us. And all at once, the, the joy and the laughter of coming together feels thin and empty and we are left surprised and sad and so God we pray for your comfort be with us in this place and in this space Help us to feel you draw near to us and enfold us in your love. Assure us by your presence that we are not alone, O oh God. We pray that in the days and weeks ahead you might stir in us move us to offer faithful care and compassion to those who are grieving. That we might know how best to love and serve in the midst of such hard times for so many. But right here, right now, in this moment, just sit with us, O oh God. hear our prayers for all of the loved ones who are suffering this morning. We pray in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. love. Betty McKinstry. Marilyn
Cheney. How are we doing? Hard morning. Let's go through the announcements and see how we're feeling as we go. First announcement that I have will come up on the screen in a moment. We are looking for actors for a Christmas play. Uh, there is a play that is in mind, but there are a whole lot of roles that need to be filled. Uh, lots of adult roles, lots of children's roles. Trying to gauge the interest of people to participate uh, with some practices in the fall. So if you would be willing, if you are interested, uh, please just contact Sarah at the email address that's on the announcement. Uh, to, to let her know that you're interested, and we will uh, kind of take stock of how we do um, with, with generating participation to, to determine whether or not we'll be able to do it. Summer singers are back. We've got a crew up here again this morning uh, to help lead us through the singing. Uh, it's a fairly easy gig. You just need to show up at 9.15 on the Sunday morning and uh, practice the hymns that we sing in the service and then sing them in the service. It's pretty easy, low impact. Uh, opportunity to, to support the ongoing work and, and uh, life of worship in the congregation. Uh, if you're interested, just show up. You can let Tanya know ahead of time if you would like to, um, that you are going to be coming, but otherwise just show up on the Sunday morning. Uh, it's always great to have voices up here to help us sing, and uh, all are welcome whether you, you do it all the time or whether it's your first time singing. Uh, by all means, come and join us. Uh, Messy Church on August 13th from 4 to 6 p.m. is going to be a family movie afternoon. Uh, they'll be watching The Incredibles, which is a fantastic movie, uh, and also a movie that I oftentimes quote in my house uh, because they tend to get, well, they tend to understand my life as a superhero father. Um, and, uh, and so uh, uh, definitely recommend the movie if you haven't seen it. Definitely recommend Messy Church if you haven't been. It's an experience like no other and well worth checking out. Uh, if you are interested, please register ahead of time. You can register on the website uh, or certainly just contact the church office if you need help doing that. Registration will close on the 10th. Uh, it's open to all ages. Anyone can, anyone can come to watch. Uh, anyone can come to be a part of the event, and the Messy Church experience is definitely one that is worth checking out. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Uh, youth group is back. Uh, this Friday, August the 5th, will be the next youth group event. Do we know what we're doing? Okay, so you're going to be meeting here at the church and doing whatever the Spirit moves you to do on Friday evening. So if you're interested, please RSVP with Nick uh, prior to Wednesday uh, so that he can make sure that there is enough, uh, enough stuff around in order for that to happen effectively. We are grateful for all the ways in which you give. Part of the great beauty of uh, being a church community and being a community that that comes together to grieve and to support and to, to hold each other up in times like this uh, is the love that radiates through uh, everybody who gathers as the church. This kind of community isn't possible without all the ways in which you continue to give of your time, your presence, and your financial gifts. It's your financial gifts that help support the ongoing work of both Ogden and McDougall. So, Whatever it is you give, we are grateful. And if you are feeling moved to give, there are ways to give online, posted on the screen. And for those who are here in the service, there are also plates at the back that you can place your offering in if you would like to do so in person. Whatever it is you give, however it is you give, thank you. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you for all the ways in which you are the church. One final announcement, which seems ill-timed and unfortunate, but there's no way around it. Uh, I need to leave as soon as the service is done today. 
I have found myself over the last two years wearing a number of different hats that I never thought I was going to wear at the time of my ordination, uh, but apparently the church had different plans for me, and I am supervising a congregation whose worship service finishes at the exact same time as ours does, and there is a congregational meeting that is directly following to call a new minister that I need to be at. And so I am going to break some land speed records, trying to get from here to there before the meeting starts, and I am trusting that all of you will pray that there are no police between here and downtown Calgary <laughs> on my behalf. And if you are watching and are a police officer, I'm not going to tell you what route I'm taking. Even in the midst of grief and loss, I'm reminded that the great beauty in the midst of it all is knowing that people were loved so much because of who they were and because of all the ways in which they loved and served others. And the three people that we have named this morning are exemplars of true faithful living and true faithful service. They are part of the great beauty, the great beauty of this community. And so maybe, just maybe, we can cling to the beauty of our memories and our fondness and we can cling to the knowledge that we are in shock this morning because they have been so loved by so many. And maybe that can move us to sing our opening hymn this morning, All Things Bright and Beautiful. Let us stand as we are able and sing. So friends, as we gather in our opening prayer, I invite you to uh, respond with the parts that are printed in black, and I will say the parts that are printed in yellow. Let us pray. 
kind and loving God, in Jesus Christ, you no longer call us servants, but friends. There is so much you have entrusted to us, even the future of your kingdom of love and love. Give us the grace to work toward the growth of mercy and goodness in this world. Be united with all your children in our global family working at bringing reconciliation and joy to everyone. Where we have stumbled, forgive us. Where we have fallen, forgive us. Where we have failed, forgive us. Set our feet, set our hearts back on the right path, O God. And lead us into your future of hope and promise. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Friends, no matter who you are, no matter what your story, you are loved. You are loved by God in the good times and in the bad. More importantly, you are a part of this community, whether you are here physically, whether you are watching online, wherever it is that you touch even the fringe, even the fringe of this family of love, you are welcome and you belong. Know that, trust that. That is the promise made known in the life, death, resurrection of Jesus Christ. You are not alone. You are loved and you are precious. Thanks be to God, amen. And so at this time, I invite us to stand as we are able and let us pass the peace of Christ to one another. You can pass the peace of Christ by a handshake or a hug if you are comfortable doing so, or simply by raising your hands to your hearts and saying, peace be with you, and then extending them outward to each other and to the world and saying, and also with you. Friends, peace be with you truly this morning, and also with you. Let us pass the peace of Christ. Ready. Whoops, yep. And still feel the weight in here. And so friends, I invite you to hold Marilyn and Larry, Bill and his family, Betty and her family, hold them all in your hearts. We need the Lord's Prayer right now, I think. And so let us pray as Jen sings for us.
totally messed with the order of service now, which means that the slides aren't going to match up with anything, but that's okay. We'll remain seated as we sing our next hymn, uh, which is Creating God, Your Fingers Trace. Let's all sing together. Life be touched by grace. Friends, that probably is our prayer this morning. Let every life be touched by grace. 
And so as we prepare to pray together our prayers of the people, we will sing, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. We will sing it at the outset of our prayers, and then we will pray as we sing it interspersed throughout. So friends, as we prepare to pray together, let us sing. God, this morning we are reminded of just how short a time we have on this earth. And we come before you a grateful people for all of the relationships and the laughter and the love that we experience in such a brief time. We come before you grateful for all the ways in which your love is made known to us in the world around us, the abundance that is poured out for us, the warmth and light. God, we look to the changing of the seasons to remind us that there are seasons in life as well, that there is a rhythm to everything. And yet even in times of grief and loss, your love remains. Love remains. And having seen and felt and received your grace, we become vessels of that grace for others. And we count it a great joy and privilege that we might be able to live and laugh and love and serve in this wonderful community. God, we know that there are people this morning who are grieving. We know that there are people dealing with the uncertainty. People who are weary. God, we pray that your comfort and your peace and your presence might descend ever gently into all of our lives. Hold us close, O oh God. Bear us up. Help us to feel the warmth of the sun on our faces and the warmth of your love in our hearts. May your grace and your light be with us in this time and in all the days that we have together. And help us to take that grace and that light into the world that we might carry it for those who feel lost and alone, those who are struggling, those who are living in fear. May we be your hands and your feet, your agents of love, your carriers of your mission of grace to all the corners of the world, beginning right here where we are in this community. that our lives might reflect our gratitude for your love. We pray as we sing.
God, we pray for your world, and we know that this is not yet the vision that you had for us living in your beautiful creation. We know that there are places where fear and violence still rule. We know that there are places where people go without the basic necessities of life. And so we pray, O oh God, for our world leaders, for all of those who have the ability to exercise authority over matters of the common good, that they might find new ways to seek the peace and prosperity and common good of all your beloved children. Steer us all away from arrogant pride. Help us to live and work shoulder to shoulder, side by side, for the good of all. Where there is hurt, give us the courage to work towards mending. Help us to give a sense of hope where all feels lost. And God, here at home, we know that there are those who are struggling just as they are throughout the world. There are those who weigh on our hearts and our minds. We lift up Kathy and Jeanette and Sue. And today, oh God, we pray for Larry and Marilyn. for the family of Bill Love and the family of Betty McKinstry. God, we also lift up all of those prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. We commend all of our prayers into your care, trusting that you will not forsake us, you will not abandon us, and that you know our hearts better than we know ourselves, O oh God. And so we give everything to you, trusting in your faithful care, trusting that you will journey with us, and trusting that in your time, all things will lead to the good as we sing. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. God's people said, Amen. Our gospel lesson this morning is taken from Matthew 25, verses 14 to 30. Again, it's like a wealthy landowner who was going on a journey and called in three workers, entrusting some funds to them. The first was given $5,000, the second $2,000, and the third 1000 and according to each one's ability. Then the landlord went away. Immediately, the worker who was receiving the 5000 went and invested it and made another five. In the same way, the worker who had received the 2,000 doubled that figure. But the worker who had received 1,000 instead went off and dug a hole in the ground and buried the money. 
After a long absence, the traveler returned home and settled accounts with them. The one who had received the 5,000 came forward bringing the additional five, saying, You entrusted me with 5,000, here are 5,000 more. The landlord said, Well done, you are a good and faithful worker. Since you were dependable in a small matter, I will put you in charge of larger affairs. Come, share my joy. The one who had received 2,000 then stepped forward with the additional two, saying, You entrusted me with 2,000. Here are 2,000 more. The landlord said to this one, Cleverly done. You too are a good and faithful worker. Since you were dependable in a small matter, I will put you in charge of larger affairs. Come and share my joy. Finally, the one who had received the 1,000 stepped forward and said to the landlord, Knowing your ruthlessness, you who reap where you did not sow and gather where you did not scatter, and fearing your wrath, I went off and buried your thousand dollars in the ground. Here is your money back. The landlord owner exclaimed, You worthless, lazy lout! You know that I reap where I do not sow and where I gather where I don't scatter, do you? All the more reason to deposit my money with the bankers so that on my return I could see it had back had it back with interest. You there, take the thousand dollars away from this bum and give it to the one with ten thousand. Those who have will get more until they grow rich, while those who have not will lose even the little they have. Throw this worthless one outside into the darkness where there is wailing and grinding of teeth. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. They say the beat of a butterfly's wings can set off a storm a world away. What if they're right and the smallest of things can power the strongest hurricane? What if it all begins inside? We hold the key that turns the tide Just a pebble in the water oh, Can set the sea in motion oh, 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 A simple act of kindness oh, 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 Can stir the widest ocean If we show a little love Heaven knows what we can change, oh yeah. So throw a pebble in the water, oh yeah. Make a wave, make a wave. Make a wave, make a wave. The single choice to take a stand. Reach out your hand to someone in need. Help somebody. Don't fool yourself and say you can. You never know what can grow. What can grow from just one seed. Oh, so come with me and seize the day. This world may never be the same. Just a pebble in the water. Just a pebble in the water. Can set the sea in motion. Can set the sea in motion. A simple act of kindness. Oh, can stir the widest ocean. Stir the widest ocean. If we show a little love. If we show a little 
little love Heaven knows what we can change Throw a pebble in the water Throw a pebble in the water Make a wave, make a wave Make a wave, make a wave Make a wave, make a wave, make a wave Make a wave, make a wave Show a little love and make a wave Seize the day Make a wave, make a wave So throw a pebble in the water Make a way, make a way I'd like to return briefly to what we were talking about last week. I had shared a, a story uh, about a time in Montgomery, Alabama in the late 50s when uh, the, the city was attempting to desegregate its public spaces and to allow uh, black children to swim with white children. And in response to the desegregation laws that were coming into effect, the city council decided instead to dump sand into the pool and then pave over that sand and then put dirt over that pavement and seed it for grass so that nobody would be allowed to swim in the pool. Friends, when we started the Ogden Project and engaged with the community, this behavior became quite normal. There seemed to be a collective sense that it would be easier to make sure that nobody got to benefit rather than for the wrong people to potentially benefit alongside the ones who needed it. This idea that there might be one or two people who would abuse the system or abuse uh, what we were offering so it would be better to make sure that nobody gets it than to have a couple of people abuse it. We hear this kind of logic a lot in our world, right? That, uh, that it would be easier to, to make sure that nobody gets to manipulate taxes, and so therefore nobody should have the benefits. Nobody, nobody should get things like the child health benefit. That's one that I, I really hear a lot of uh, that hits me hard because my family benefits from the child health benefit, obviously, with three little minions running around. But for fear that somebody might benefit that shouldn't, it seems easier to believe that it would, it would be better for nobody to benefit at all. This is one example of this, this burying of the talents kind of thing that I think Jesus is speaking about in this parable, this idea that we are given something that we can use to either bless others or that we can squirrel away. And this was the the biggest test, I think, of our, of our attempt to move forward with the Ogden Project. We knew what we were doing was going to benefit many. We knew that we would have the opportunity to transform lives, that we would have the opportunity to truly and legitimately serve in our community in a way that God calls the church to serve and that responded to so many of the needs that were identified in the community that Ogden serves but that we would have to deal with the reality that there was a very prevalent sense that it would be better to just fill in the hole in the ground, seed it for grass, and let nothing else grow there. And we heard it time and time and time again. 
Not just from the community, though. One of the biggest learnings I had throughout this entire process is that even as the United Church of Canada, I think we stand at a bit of a crossroads. Congregationally, as a denomination, we stand at a crossroads right now determining whether or not we really mean what we've been saying for the last 90 plus years. As the church that has championed the cause of social justice, the, the church that has championed the social gospel in the world since before it was trendy and hip and cool. We find ourselves now, I think as a denomination, in what we call post-Christendom, where the church is not the center of every community, being tested as to whether or not we truly mean it. Because I can say that even trying to get the national church, even trying to get our denomination to support the work that we're doing has been laborious. Not because they disagree with what we're doing, but because they're afraid. They're afraid of the risk. They're afraid of the risk of it not working out the way everything has been planned. They're afraid of what happens when the Bank of Canada suddenly increases interest rates by a percent without warning. Or what happens when two years of pandemic completely and totally erodes anything that looks like a construction schedule. They're afraid of what happens when adversity strikes. I've learned that we as a denomination are perhaps a bit more risk averse than we want to admit to ourselves. We are afraid. And we are afraid, I think, because we no longer occupy that voice that we used to have in our country. We no longer occupy that voice of the largest Protestant denomination in Canada where we spoke, people listened. I hear stories of back in the days when the moderator actually had a direct line to the Prime Minister of Canada. We do not occupy that space anymore. And yet we at Ogden have always known, I think, that the work of Ogden United Church is not done in our community. That our church is still needed in our community. Much as McDougal is still needed in this community. And it's tough now, I know, more than ever, to talk about this stuff because I think, I think we all had COVID fatigue, sure. We had pandemic fatigue. But the fatigue that has set in over the past six months, the, almost the reemergence fatigue, I think, that has set in seems to sap our strength and our courage and our endurance faster than even pandemic fatigue did. We're tired. We know there is work to do. We know that we are called to do that work, but we are tired as a denomination, as congregations, as people of God. We are weary. And yet God gives to us. Gives to us what might be considered a small matter. In the case of Ogden United Church, gives to us a building, a piece of property, and a vision of a mission of serving the wider community and transforming lives. And it has fallen to us to decide whether we are going to bury that and do nothing with it, or try to grow it, try to expand it, and try to make it real. So that the mission of God's love in the community can, can continue long after we are all gone. Now, I don't know for certain, but I imagine at McDougal, funnily enough, I was not born when McDougal was formed, but I believe there were probably some folks here who were around when McDougal started, or pretty shortly after it started, who would remember planting a church here with a vision of the church enduring forever. 
right? Certainly in Ogden in 1914 when that community started to gather and in 1916 when they built their building and in 1950 when they began the expansion process and then again in the 60s when they expanded even more and certainly even now today with this new redevelopment, it's all part of that same sense that we are part of something bigger than ourselves. We are part of a community that endures beyond our lifetime with people who have come before us and people who will come after us and that it is not purely encapsulated by our time there that God's work happens in the community. It is our job to prepare the way for those who will come after us and to grow what little we have been given into something bigger. Practically speaking, physically speaking, that's what we're doing. We're going from two stories to four and a half. It's getting bigger. But more importantly, we are reinvigorating the vision of a really old model, a church, really. A church that is the center of the community. A church where seven days a week, 365 days a year, things are happening in the church purely for the benefit of the community that we serve. It is our hope that if nothing else, when all is said and done and this is built, and we can walk into it and worship in it and serve in it and welcome people in it and grant reprieve to so many of the issues that people are facing in our community, that we too might be able to sit back and go, well done. You have taken what I have given you. You have doubled it. Well done, good and faithful servant. So much of the work that we have done has been situated for me in my learning around the parable of the talents. You'd be amazed how angry church people get when you start saying, can we talk about what Jesus said about like burying our money? This is the vision of growing for the church. It's been a long road. If all goes well and the creek don't rise, next week, I'll be able to videotape some stuff for worship from the construction site to show you exactly where we're at in real time. It's going to be fantastic, I think, for everybody to see how far it's come. But as of today, we are looking at grand opening in the beginning of 2023. We will be here through Christmas. We are that delayed by pandemic and supply chain and you know, related pieces like that. We've been out of our building since 2020. And we've been here graciously hosted by McDougal. And for that, we are grateful. But I wonder as a church, I wonder as a denomination, I wonder even as, as the news this week has been about the papal visit and the apology, I wonder if the Christian church as a whole if maybe we need to stop for a moment and take a look at all that we have been given over the years, all that God has given us to bless others, and to evaluate where we have um, invested those blessings with courage, where we have seen them grow, and where perhaps we have suffered a failure of nerve, been timid, and perhaps not invested wisely. History will judge whether or not this was the right thing to do, right? We believe in it. I believe in it. And I've been amazed at how many partners have come on side with us to do this work who also believe in it. The church will not be alone in this building. The church has not been alone through the construction process. We've been able to rely on very good, skilled, capable people who have heard the vision and not only been inspired by it, but want to be a part of it. Which is a good thing, because I'm a really terrible construction manager. But the great beauty of this is that when we are done, we hope that from floor to rooftop, God's love, 
the promise of hope for all people regardless of their story will be visible no matter where you are in the community. And you will know that whatever it is you are going through, there is a place you can go to be reminded that you are not alone and to find people who will journey with you on the way. Friends, the hardest thing for me personally as a minister through this whole process has been experiencing the darker side of human nature that seems to accompany these projects. Not just the Ogden project, it's happening all over. This idea that it would be better not to benefit people who are not like me. People whose experience is not like mine. People whose story is not like mine. That in order to make sure that they don't benefit, it would be better to do nothing at all. And so at some point in time, you just got to dig in and stand up and be counted and trust that God has called us all to good things and that as followers of Jesus, we can do no less than to invest all that we are given to bless others into the promise that done well, we will multiply it and multiply it and multiply it. So thank you for allowing me to at least speak about the project over the last few weeks. It has been a pleasure to do so. It served as a good reminder of how far we've come as well, I think, from an idea back in 2018 to where we are now, looking at a few more months before we can finally move in. And hopefully when it is built, Hopefully when it is standing and we are worshiping, you'll all stop by and enjoy coffee or worship or come for a tour because it's in no small part of the, the support of McDougal that we've been able to do this. I think that's worth noting. You've given us a place to be while we've been displaced. You've given us the opportunity to worship with you. You've given us the opportunity to be part of a shared community of faith. And even pandemic notwithstanding, that was important, but even more so through a pandemic. You have blessed us. You have blessed the people of Ogden United Church with your hospitality and your welcome. And for that, we are truly grateful. So thanks be to God. Amen. And so we will go out singing, wherever you may go, I will follow. More voices, number 216.
Friends, it's not been an easy morning. I'm going to wish I had that sermon back, I think, tomorrow, once I've had time to process it all, but that's okay. There is grace even in when we are only operating at about 60 or 70 percent, and certainly we have all received plenty of bad news this morning uh, that has kind of shaped the day. So just know that as you leave this place, you are welcome to stay here as long as you would like. Tanya will play extra long for those who would like to sit here. Stay for fellowship afterwards. Hold each other up. Dana will be here um, if you need to talk. I know there's a lot going on. Uh, but know that you are loved. Know that I love you. My hasty departure is not a reflection of my desire to get out of here in any kind of hurry. Um, know that you are loved. Know that you are not alone. And trust, trust that God will walk with you and that in due time and in due course, things will get brighter. We are not alone in life and death and life beyond death. God is with us. Thanks be to God. Go out in peace this day, friends. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, Mother of us all. You are loved. Amen.